Hello, hello, hello. This is attorney Mike Grev. I'm coming to you from Chicago as usual, and I just got pulled into another rabbit hole. I didn't know about this case. I have to admit that I'm not completely up to speed, but a whole bunch of people asked me my opinion on it, sent me videos on it, and it all started with this guy, Trevor Summers. Um, people were sending me the video saying he wants to represent himself. He's accused of all sorts of uh, nasty stuff you'll see from the testimony. I don't actually have the I, I never saw the charging instrument, so I don't I don't want to say with specificity, but but you, you'll get the point. You'll get the point. He ties her up, among other things, um, or at least that's that's the testimony. It's bizarre. I, I did I did take a little clip of him asking to represent himself to set the stage. I edited a lot out. Um, I, there, there's links in, in the description to the original source video. Uh, there's a lot more if you want to see it, but I, I cut it down to to the bits that I thought were most interesting. And I know, oh boy, is it bizarre. Let's get it started. Go ahead and take a 15 minute break. Um, Ma'am, you may step down, do not discuss your testimony. You will be back on the stand for cross. Yes, sir. Your Honor. Yes. I have been informed by Mr. Sum. Yes. That he wishes to discharge me as lead counsel. Okay. He wishes to exercise his fifth minute, his right, sixth minute, right, to represent himself. And I've explained to him that should he choose to do that, that he may have to do that throughout the remainder of the trial. That's absolutely minute, correct. Uh, I was prepared, uh, or started to prepare for cross-examination. I had something different. I was told this this morning, so, so I think he wants to address the court now. Part. The bailiff also has this issue. We can do this at the break because they have to do other things if he's going to I don't say that himself. lightly. But this is where we are right now. Okay, I appreciate the heads up. Let me uh, talk to Mr. Summers at this point. Mr. Summers, you have a request of the court, sir? Yes, Your Honor. I what would, is it? I would like to um, resume self-representation and discharge Mr. Marchese as lead counsel. And do you believe that to be a wise decision? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Are you unhappy with the services of Mr. Marchese? Uh, I'm not unhappy with the services of Mr. Marquez. I do not believe that he fully understands um, the circumstances surrounding the events, and it would be better if I did the cross-examination um, from here on out. You realize that you're... It's not going to get better for you. ...able to continue communicating with him, as I have observed you doing throughout the course of the proceedings, to um, talk to him while he's representing you, to write notes, uh, to ask that during his cross-examinations he come over and confer with you. You realize that those are all options to you while he's representing you, do you? I do understand that. Well, apparently the judge let him do it, which is uh, amazing. He had gone back and forth. I cut a lot of it out because it gets dry. But he, he had represented himself and had an attorney, then represented himself and had an attorney. And, I, and the judge said, that this is it. We're mid-trial here. If, if he's out, he's out. He's not conferring with you. It's over. You finish. You finish by yourself. And here he is. Good morning, Ms. Matthewson. I'd like to just... Um, Mr. Go Summers, you, you <clears throat> voice this kind of that, that microphone, though. I don't know if it can be read. This is his ex-wife. Uh, I actually don't know her name. It's Miss Matthewson now, I believe. Justin, where it can um, amplify your voice. Is that better? Okay. <clears throat> Good morning, Ms. Matthewson. I wanted to review um, the testimony that you gave here today. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'd like to just go through your testimony from the beginning. Um, starting with the evening of... Did anybody see the direct examination? If you did, tell me in the chat. Um, Friday, March 10th, 2017. Um, your statement was that you went to Trevor's neighborhood uh, to pick up the children 
uh, Arden, Bryn, and Grady that evening. Is that correct? Yes. And um, that was at approximately what time? Dinner time. Was it still light out? Yes. Okay. And um, do of you know course. approximately how far the community center is from Mr. Summer's house? Within the same community. Okay. So you came to the same community um, through... There is a, a beginning point that, that all this is so awkward. Imagine this. This is his ex-wife that, he, that he's cross-examining here. So I think she handles it really well. But there he is talking about himself in the third person because you kind of have to. That's just sort of the way it's set up. The whole, the whole thing is so awkward and gets so much worse. Two weeks after the alleged March incident? Yes. Okay. Um, prior to uh, March 10th, 2017, um, that week. Were you sick at all? Yes. Objection, Judge Relevance. I'm going to allow a little bit of leeway. Let's see where um, it's going. What's the next question? That's interesting, Lauren. You say we're watching him victimize her all over again, and maybe so, but this is constitutional. He's got a Sixth Amendment right to represent himself. He's got a right to confront his accusers. He's accused of a crime. Uh, this is awkward and awful and terrible, but this is what courtrooms are. And and I, I think he does a, a, a bad job from what I see so far, but I, again, I don't see it in the context of the whole trial. But it is interesting, and it does show that these things mean something. Um, e even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's awkward, even if it's wrong, uh, the Constitution says it. All right, let's go. Um, let's go to the um, evening where I arrived. Um, you've seen the state's evidence in um, the videos and the photographs as you've attested to them. Do you remember seeing a video of um, your neighbors? I know. Uh, camera from their house, uh, an evening video from 1418 Dubloom Road. I was never shown that video. Okay. That's just beautiful. Do you remember seeing this video? I was never showed that video. I don't know if she's telling the truth or not. I don't really care. He doesn't know how to control a witness. And it's like, okay, now what are you going to do, big shooter? <laughs> um, do you remember approximately what time I arrived here? I was asleep. Do you... Um, recall which window I came in and in. I was asleep. Do you, or could you tell us if um, there were any doors on your house other than the front door? No exterior doors other than the front door, the door leading to the garage, but no other doors. Okay. Um, Throughout this, I don't, I don't know, again, because I don't know the context of the case, but I'm only seeing this in a, in a vacuum. But she just strikes me as a very credible witness. I could be wrong, but that she just strikes me as very credible. Do you remember um, what was in your backyard? A swing set. Do you remember how that swing set got there? Objection, Judge. Relevance. Sustained. Okay. I, I that that is so cringe. I think his theory there is, hey, I put up a swing set for the kids, so now I get to tie you up. At, uh, you know, years after we've been divorced. Um, did your children use that swing set? Yeah. Objection, Judge. Relevance sustained. Did the children ever utilize the windows to go into the backyard? Not that I am aware of. Okay. Um. When you looked at the photos of the windows on the side of the house and on the back of the house, did you notice excess dirt in those? Or would you like me to get the picture to refresh? No. Okay. Um, do you recall from any police reports or any of the evidence that you've seen how long I was at your house before you were awakened? Judge, I'm going to object. She can only testify to what she is aware of, not what she read in a police report. Um, the witness can only testify to her own personal knowledge, not what she obtained from reading. So uh, rephrase the question. Okay. 
It was, it was a good objection. The objection was hearsay. It's an appropriate objection the way she described it, too. It's fine. But it, it's just funny after after dealing with the debt purge trial, hearing an actual hearsay objection without the term hearsay being used. Do you know, long, <clears throat> do you know how long I was at your house until you were woken? I woke up at 3 a.m. You woke up at 3 a.m.? And you said um, that you were woken by water droplets? Yes. Okay. Um, so that was the first moment you were woken up by water droplets? Yes. Okay. And you said it was dark in your room? Yes. How dark was it? The only light was coming from my digital clock. Okay. Very dark. <clears throat> was that enough light to see uh, a figure standing in a certain position in your room? Yes. I mean, how creepy is that? This is his cross-examination. You wake up by water droplets at 3 o'clock in the morning. The only light is your alarm clock, but it's dark enough to see a figure. The figure that uh, uh, is actually me, and I'm the one cross-examining you right now. Ugh. And um, when you say that uh, you were startled awake, um, do you know... I'm sorry, let me um, change that. Um, you said then that your feet were, were grabbed. Yes. Is it one ankle, two ankles? I don't recall. She didn't say she didn't say ankles at all, and uh, the the fact that 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 you switch the question shows that you're guilty of it. It's just it's just a horrible horrible play. I don't know on so many levels. Um, did you recall me saying anything about? Calm down, it's just me? Yes. Okay. Um, Calm down, it's just me at 3 o'clock in the morning grabbing you uh, unannounced. Do you recall if you threw any other items? No. Do you recall how those items got neatly placed back on a table in a vanity? No. Um, do you recall other items that were on the end tables? No. Your Honor, may I um, publish some of these states uh, exhibits? Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Matthewson, let's move forward in time a little bit. Okay, I'm going to summarize because he, he spent a half hour going through the house and any place that was undisturbed saying this didn't look like there was a... a um, a uh, physical altercation in this in this area. Uh, she's she's rolling with it. Then the other thing is, I guess she took cough syrup the night before, and and she did that. He he goes back and forth on his theory. So it sort of seems like he 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 on one hand saying like you can't see me and you can't identify that it was me, but then he admits that it's him constantly it's it's really bizarre but anyway it's a half hour and it's very awkward and slow this this is even more awkward <laughs> but but it gets to the heart of the matter um so you're woken up and you say that you were drug into the living room um do you remember approximately how long you were in the living room approximately three hours approximately three hours okay and um in that time in the living room, um, have you described in any prior testimony it as wrestling? Yes. Okay. Um, do you recall three hours? It's a lot of talking. Um, other than just uh, your comments about going into some boats or offshore, do you, do you recall what other things we were talking about for three oh, hours? Oh, buckle up. It gets much worse. There, there wasn't talking going on at this point. There was fighting, wrestling, me trying to get free and out of the house. And did those photographs uh, depict the kind of wrestling and fighting and, that you're talking about? To me, they did. They did? Yes. Okay. Um, do you recall uh, our son Landon coming to the front door? I recall knowing that Landon was there and him being in the vicinity of the front door. Okay. Um, do you remember if you or I opened the door for him? I don't recall. Um, how dark was it in that living room? It was very dark. Could you see my face? 
um, as it got lighter, but at 3 a.m. I, I couldn't, I just knew it was you. Okay. Um, well, I believe that um, you testified that the children left the home around 5.30 that morning. Is that correct? Approximately. Okay. So that brings it closer to two and a half hours. No. Um, the children, if they left at 5.30, do you believe that the sun was coming out at that point? It was winter, not... That weekend was when daylight savings would have happened. We had not gone into the daylight savings yet, so I don't recall. So you're just agreeing it was very dark in that living room? Yes. Okay. And, um, but you don't remember all the things we were talking about. You thought we were fighting, wrestling, that kind of stuff for most of that time? Yes. And is that where you sustained some of the bruises? Yes. Some of the scratches? Yes. Okay, so you think most of the injuries that were photographed were happened in that living room? Um, some happened in that living room, some happened through other moments of the events. Okay. I, I mean, seriously, right here, it's like he's just giving a factual basis for his crimes. Um, it was your testimony that you saw scarves wrapped around my body in the living room? Tied to your belt loops. Tied to my belt loops. And they couldn't have come from your closet? Those scarves were not at my new home. Okay. Um, so you, you didn't notice them at any other time until we were in a dark living room? Yes. And you could discern in that darkness the colors of peach, pink, and white? I could not see the colors at that time. Um, it was your prior testimony that you noticed the colors, you, you stated the colors. I know that they are those colors because you used them to tie me up after the struggle, so I know what colors they were. Oh, oh so how did that work out for you, Sparky? Oh my god, that is just devastating. Devastating. He's clueless. Um. Let me ask you, Mrs. Matthewson, do we ever use scarves uh, intimately? Objection, Judge. Legal basis. Um, Your Honor, it goes to... Did, did, did she can answer the question? Okay. Oh. I do not recall ever using scarves intimately. In 16 years of marriage, did we ever go beyond just regular intercourse? Objection, Judge. Relevance. Hold on. Don't, don't, don't respond. Um, I'm going to allow it over. Mr. Matheson, you may answer. <laughs> I was a teenager when I began dating you. I, I'm sorry, can you answer the question? I'm answering wait, the question. Wait, 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 don't, yeah, don't, don't cut her off. Um, but unless you intended to narrow the scope. I just didn't want to get into hurt the history that she's starting out with. I did want to just ask well, do you have during a specific, our marriage. Do you have a, specific, a more specific question? I asked during our marriage. I didn't ask about her teenage years. She started out with her teenage years. I asked about our marriage. Did we do more than just... She, you asked an open-ended question, and her answer was responsive, Goofy. Just another reason why you shouldn't be doing this yourself. It's regular intercourse. Well, do you have a more specific question than, I mean, that's a broad more than, you have a specific question during the marriage? Okay, I can be specific. Um, did we, during our marriage, use uh, peripheral objects in our sexual activity? Oh, good Lord. More in the early marriage, prior to having five children. Okay. Did we get more adventurous in our sexual habits? Judge, I'm going to object. And the legal basis is? Relevance. Sustained. 
I think, you know, it's funny. Someone on Twitter just said, you know, she, he just did this to um, try to embarrass her, and that might be the case. I'll, however, I actually disagree with the judge here, and this is, again, why he, he needs an attorney. It looks like he's setting up uh, the defense. Hey, I didn't do this to her. This was, the, You know, we're having a consensual naughty adventure. Fine. I don't think that's what happened. I'm not buying it. But if that's your defense, this is relevant as the day is long. Is it creepy? Yes. Is it awkward? Yes. But it's relevant if you're trying to establish we, we were doing this because we, we wanted to do it. That does take it out of the realm of a crime. So theoretically, that, that defense makes sense. But he doesn't know how, you know, the judge sustains this objection, which is fine. But he doesn't know how to argue that. I, I mean, I'd be jumping up and down if I was defending him. Um, did we ever, um, did we ever use scarves or somebody, uh, kick Margie out of here strings or anything to, um, as part of our sexual encounters from time to time. I don't recall a single instance. I don't recall any. Okay. Um, but you do recall us using a variety of quote unquote toys and things of that nature. Okay. Um, well, I'll move on. Uh, it was your testimony that uh, we were in the living room when Arden came into the home. Yes. Is that correct? Um, is there any chance that you might be mistaken that we were in your bedroom when Arden came into the home? The way I remember it is I was in the living room. <laughs> Thank you, Kyle. Do you recall possibly um, sitting on your bed when Arden came into the home? Objection, Judge. Ask and answer. Not this specific question, only if you know. <coughs> oh, I, I, Thank I you, Charles. I, what was the question? Do you remember if you were sitting on your bed? When our the way I recall it is I was sitting in the living room. Okay. Um, and when Arden came in, did you say, Anything to Arden? No. Did you look at Arden? I looked at her. She did not look at me. Did you say anything to the two younger children? No. How long was Arden in the home? A few moments. A few moments as in seconds, minutes? Enough time to get the children and leave. Did she take anything with her? I did. I have no idea if she took anything with her. Um, did Arden um, leave peacefully? Yes. Okay. Um, do you believe that um, if there was some that means you're doing it right. problem, Arden would have spoken up? Objection, Judge. Speculation. Sustained. Okay. Um, Thank you. Okay. I will go forward. After Arden left, um, was I on my telephone? I, I, I have no idea. Um, Thank you, Pat. Do you know if I was communicating with Arden while she drove to my house. At the time, I had no idea she drove to your house. Okay. While she was, right after she left, what, what did we do? You tied me up. Before she left? After she left? After. Okay, I'm sorry it's not funny, but I, I just like the way she just handles it like a champ. Yeah, You know, like, I, I, this, this is what's going on. I, I'm not putting up with it. After she left, you tied me up. Where? In my bed. In your bed. And you said this was with string. You said 
sorry, Christmas lights, and you said a vacuum cleaner? Yes. Okay. Um, so it was... Agreed. How did I go get the Christmas lights? It was already tied with the scarf and the string. Then you left and went and got the Christmas lights. So I left the room to go. His cross examination is just horrible. Like she, he, he keeps asking her these questions, and she gives devastatingly good, reasonable answers that make complete sense. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not funny, but it's funny. Go get Christmas lights. While I was tied up. And there were other items you saw in the room that probably would have been easier than going out to your garage to get Christmas. Objection, judge, speculation. Sustained is just speculation. <laughs> I mean, what a horrible question. You know, I, I could have tied Jeff other ways, but but you're saying this. I mean, that, that's that, that's hard to believe. No, it's not. No, it's not. You, ah. Uh. Um, let me ask you this, Ms. Matthewson. Um, what is the time frame between uh, when Arden left and um, there were videos made on your telephone? It was about six, five thirty, six o'clock. She left. Uh, the videos happened when I was first hogtied, which would be approximately eleven o'clock. Six, I'm, I'm trying to do the math while I'm thinking it's five hours. Five hours? Okay. Um, what do we talk about for five hours? I didn't do much talking. You can go on and on and on about random nonsense and it is it it's incoherent nonsense but you can just go on about it oh you, you first of all this is funny <laughs> because that's what it what, whatever it's so credible what she's saying you just know it's true by uh by context and by the, her veracity okay um do you remember specifically what incoherent nonsense I was talking about? Chartering a boat, money in offshore accounts, having going to the island, having a bodyguard. Uh, I, I, again, he knows what he was talking about, and she's not lying. So, what was I talking about? Oh, committing more crimes, more charges, more more things. Dummy, you want to hear that? In open court? Okay, here it is. ...to watch me, your parents' involvement, our children, what happened through the marriage. There's many, many, many topics that you could go on for hours about. Do you remember speaking to me about any um, offshore accounts? Do you remember questioning me about offshore accounts? You want to talk about the offshore accounts? Did you question me about where they are? There are two reasons why I would believe that you had offshore accounts. Two reasons. I'm just asking right now if you asked me where those offshore accounts were. <laughs> Judge, we're going to need to approach. All right. Um, Th this is interesting. You'll see why she didn't want to answer. And she's smart. She's very smart. We'll excuse the jury, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Please do not discuss the case amongst yourselves or do any research related to the case. Uh, we'll take a very short break. All rise for the jury. She didn't limit the, and so that's why she's hesitant. Yeah, he's hesitant because he's opening up. The yeah, he is. He absolutely is. She can answer. She believes that the feds were after him due to his money yeah, yeah. issue. He's opening the door. She can answer. Yeah. But I appreciate her hesitancy, not knowing since there was a motion in limine. But if he asks for that information and that's the answer to it, that's called opening the door, which he clearly is doing if he wants to continue that line of questioning. Anything else? Did you want to be heard, Mr. Summers? Uh, yes, sir. I'm not asking about anything federal. I'm, I'm asking if she 
and typically ask me one question about having an offshore account. So what exactly is your question to her? If she asked me, if did you did she, ask me about the accounts? I asked, did she ask me where I had offshore accounts? It has nothing right. to do that's, with my. That's account. a specific leading question that calls for a yes or a no answer. Yes. So, um, but be very careful. Yes. I, I'm going to just answer that question, yes or no. But if you ask any other questions. That are not specifically questions that call for a yes or a no. They require you to say something in response to that question that may have been the subject of motion and limiting. You absolutely may do it. All right. Okay, I'll clear this up. Just so, I know I've got a lot of attorneys in here, and it's pretty obvious. But there's a motion in limine, which means there's a pretrial motion saying, let's not discuss the offshore accounts. That's why she was nervous to answer it. But if, uh, th but it was his motion in limine from, from, the, from the defense side. If the defense gets up and asks about it, you can answer it. They've opened the door. It's a colossally stupid idea. Apparently, the offshore accounts thing is not good for him. It doesn't sound good form i mean it's obvious that it's not good form but he has now asked her that question they can ask her all sorts of stuff about it because he brought it up but she didn't want to do that because she didn't want to violate that pre-trial motion and and she's a lay person and that's very very understandable so the judge lays it out nicely the concern is if her answer is she did not ask specific questions about it which then calls in question to the jury why didn't she question him more about it she didn't question him more about it because she already knew all of these federal issues he has had for years and years and years. So she, it okay. may seem... So, it, so it's he may a, still open the door with his leading question. If she says no, then on redirect, you're welcome to, to ask redirect questions related to the answers she gave on cross. Yes, Your Honor. All right. You understand that, Mr. Summers? I don't know what she's going to say. I know you want to know whether she asked you about them, yes or no. What Ms. Johnson has suggested, if she says no, then that leaves open the opportunity in the question on redirect as to why didn't you ask him. And if the reason that she didn't is the basis of a motion in limine that stuff she wasn't supposed to talk about, you've opened that door. Well, I think, Your Honor, we just put the idea in her head about that. That's not the basis of this question. Oh my God, he just doesn't. He just doesn't get it. First of all, I say this all the time, and it's okay. Judges do it every day, but pro se's get treated differently. I already know all this stuff. Uh, most attorneys who practice law know that know everything that the judge is saying right there. But he's doing him a favor explaining it to him. What he's really trying to tell him is, big dummy, withdraw your question because you're opening a can of worms that you don't want to open. Uh, but yeah, you know, I wouldn't get that. Yeah, a, ju a judge would just let me be stupid and and let my client get hammered and just say, "Well, you should know. You went to law school." Well, I mean, she's under oath to answer truthfully, and the question you want answered right now is yes or no. Did she ask you? And I'm going to allow it. You proceed at your own risk as to whether you open any doors. You understand that? Yes. All right. Judge, we do also. I want to put on the record. I know Your Honor had mentioned yesterday that that if we do not finish. Um, the state had planned on resting Thursday. Um, we are have doing everything to move as quickly as we can. Um, we are eliminating some of our witnesses that are not absolutely necessary to prove our charges. That's good. Um, and we have serious concerns based upon the number of continuances that this defendant has filed in this case that he does not want this case to go to a jury. Mm -hmm. And now that you have made that comment, that it is the state's serious concern that he is going to do anything and everything he can to prolong this case. Approximately how much longer do you anticipate your cross of this witness is going to be? Uh, your Honor, you're welcome to see my notes. I'm on page 2 of 14. Um, oh, sweet Jesus. Here, here we go. Here we go. He's on page 2 of 14. We don't have it all here, but... Uh, I, the, the prosecutor is, is kind of funny. She, she's just kind of tattling on him in advance, but she's right. She's like, keep an eye on him because it, it, delay is where we're at now. I'm just going item by item, direct cro or crossing exactly the things she attested to. <laughs> well, there you have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's it, that that question was a horrible idea. 
that question was a completely horrible idea. And as you can see, they said that the state plans to rest on Thursday. We're sitting here Thursday. I went over there. I wasn't going to like conflict with it. I went over to um, the source to see if uh, if it was going, but the I, I didn't see a video up. I don't know if they're if they're recording and playing later or just ah, whatever. I couldn't find a live stream for the trial. You guys, tell me if they're if the trial is live streaming right now because that that thing is going on. And if the state's resting, and he's representing himself, oh good lord! If he's representing himself, then he has to present the defense case in chief, and he has no idea what I just said. <laughs> I might I might have to do more videos on this before it's over, but I literally a, a whole bunch of people suggested this to me. I apologize. That is all that I saw. Well, I saw a little bit more of those clips. I edited them down, but I'm not I'm not uh, well versed in the facts on this case. Although I learned a lot from from that right there. I, you you can see what the basis of the allegations are. You can see what his personality is like. You can see what her personality is like. I'm seeing in there that, uh, that there's been lots of other interesting stuff, which I'm sure on this case. But I can't judge. I can't really judge it against other other testimony from what i see in a vacuum this went horribly wrong for him as a matter of law maybe maybe he just thinks i'm going down i'm gonna have my fun i i you know i do think there's something to it like embarrassing her talking about um private matters but at least for me, that stuff doesn't work. I don't care. I don't care if you got a little adventurous within a marriage. That that is G-rated stuff in my world. And she handled it like a champ. She did. She did, she didn't get freaked out. She just kind of said it the way it was, and was very convincing, at least to me. So uh, l let me let me know if if that thing's still still going on. Maybe maybe I'll hop back on and do more of the trial. Uh, that but that was. That was a bizarre, bizarre cross-examination. All right. I will see you all soon.